And we are recording. What's up, everybody? Hello, everyone. Cinematic Suffering. Hey. Woo. Hello. We're back. We are. We are indeed. Tonight, we are digging in to Beyond the Gates. <laughs> Sorry, I, I initiated too much fog. <laughs> fog, right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, Beyond the Gates. Uh, the, if you saw our watch along, you'll know that uh, we barely paid attention to it, but uh, nonetheless, we did derive some meaning or understanding from it, so we'll discuss. Some deep emotional meaning. Yeah. Yes, yes. The film was released in 2016. It's a magnum opus uh, directed by Jackson Stewart and written by Jackson Stewart and Stefan uh, Scarlatta. It stars Graham Skipper, Chase Williamson, Bria Grant, Jesse Merlin, and the incomparable Barbara Crampton. Hell yeah. Let's watch uh, let's watch the theatrical trailer real quick. For people on YouTube, you'll be able to see this. But if you're listening to the podcast, just, just imagine the trailer by the sounds you'll hear. Don't close your eyes because you're probably driving. I don't remember that last part being in the actual movie. Do I was you? about to say, there's some things in there that um, kind of surprised me a little bit. And uh, we, we put the B-roll in the trailer. What's a, <laughs> what's a big whip? This is one of those things where, first of all, they, they said the, the, the writing on it, you know, for the, the exclamations from the reviews was fun and hilarious. And I was just wondering... Did these people watch the movie? Uh, what a part it was about it was fun and hilarious. Uh, yeah, it was. You know, yeah. like I, I was probably more frustrated with it in certain ways uh, as we were watching it than than on thinking back on it. I'm probably a little bit more forgiving having uh, sat with it a minute. But yeah, you know, no, I totally agree. In fact, I was thinking about that um, today before we're heading into into the podcast here that maybe we're I was we're a little bit harsh um going into it and we certainly made that known through the watch through but you know after you know letting it simmer for a couple of days because when we watch it on friday it's yeah a couple of days so yeah we had the weekend to to really absorb what we saw i, I mean i don't i don't apologize for my initial reaction because <laughs> uh you know i mean it did have some some uh you know, some pacing problems, but I did a tiny bit more research. Um, you might have to, uh, on the director, uh, Jackson Stewart. And it turns out that he was Stuart Gordon's understudy. Stuart oh. Gordon, if, if any of you don't know, is the director, just the, uh, infamous, uh, like director of the classic reanimator from beyond Faust, uh, uh, what's Castle the society? Freak. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and that's what I, I, I noted that. I, now, I had no idea he was – Jackson Stewart was associated with Stuart Gordon at all. So that's a really cool uh, little uh, nugget of information you dug up there because throughout the watch through, I there was constant nods to Stuart Gordon. Constant. Yeah. I mean, not only was – the main character's name was Gordon, for one. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the, there's actors that, that were used – in uh this little play thing that was done here in los angeles los angeles called reanimate of the musical and stuart garden gordon was heavily involved in that and i actually met stuart gordon at one of those shows which was really cool and that but is cool couple, yeah and a couple of these actors were in that show so all that stuff was tied in along with barbara crampton as well who was famous to be in a lot of those gordon films yeah it was almost like the uh, it was almost like the Stuart gordon was the linchpin for this uh movie um they they might have been able to be a little bit more inspired in in <laughs> some ways like i didn't yeah. i didn't hate the movie but it was frustrating like uh the thing that frustrated me about it was that y you have basically you have three characters that are the main kind of characters in the movie that weren't really that interesting they had i felt like everybody in it was a better actor than than what they were given they weren't yeah. given a lot to work with they all seemed like fine actors to me but they they just it, it, it was kind of like come on do something that's kind of what i was always urging the movie to do is yeah something. No, that's a that's a great point because all, all these guys, all these guys are are no. If they're not over the top, the best actors ever, they're very competent actors because I have yeah. seen them in a few things. So it, it was kind of surprising when I first saw this. Um, I, I I explained it on the watch through um, for the people who are not uh, following us on Patreon to see this watch through. Then and you need to. 
I'll just rehash what I just said. I said there was that um, I, I had watched about 20 minutes of this film before before um, yeah. I, I suggested it to, for cin cinematic suffering because I was we were my wife and I were watch, sitting down. And we just wanted to watch some a bad horror film or at least a horror film, not wanting it to be bad. But uh, she couldn't get through the first 10 minutes of it. And uh, I said, well, I'm going to give it a little bit more of a chance. And then by 20 minutes, I was like, I I'm out, too. But then I <laughs> This is something for cinematic, so uh, I immediately contacted Clay and I was like, "Let's check out the trailer for this film. Let's uh, let's check it out." And so, um, and, and yeah, and that pacing, that dull pacing, keeps keeps going for maybe until the first legitimate kill, which happens forty eight minutes, fifty minutes into. The oh, movie. it's it's unacceptably long into the movie, but it was kind of like you're almost. It's almost like if you go to see a comedian and you don't laugh through the first half of their set, and then when you finally right. do, it's almost a reprieve. And that was when the first kill was like, oh, finally a kill. But what it kind of surprised me about this is like, okay, it's an obvious low budget film that we're dealing with. You can tell it's a it's a new director because they're making some kind of you know like. Um, uh, he, he's making some some mistakes, I'd say. He's kind of making some new new director mistakes. Yeah. So you're like, all right. But then the kills show up, and it's like, who did you get to do the FX for this? Because they right. aren't bad at all. Like, there's yeah. some um, the redeeming uh, factor of these is that there's some pretty good kills in there. There's one headshot that's like, damn man, that looks like they made a real convincing bust of the actor's head, yeah. and it, it, it really looked good. I was like, wow, it's a uh, surprising that they actually kind of come with the gore when they need to right yeah and that's what uh i think that was that's well when that finally happened we were both like you were cheering i know you were cheering you're like fuck yes I was like, <laughs> finally i was just like breathing kind of a sigh of relief going oh my god finally we're you know doing something at least and yeah the 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 special gore effects were really great and uh yeah like i said i think when, when you think of the redeeming value of movie you don't particularly think maybe it's the gore fix but i think this is what kind of brought me back might brought you back into the film to like okay let's see where this keeps going um, yeah. unfortunately the kill count is rather still low there's the, there's not a lot of people in the movie so that's to be expected yeah. i guess there weren't a lot of characters to kill like in the they just they they weren't developed well like if you're if most of your movie is people sitting around talking in a room, they need to be saying something that, yeah. that keeps the audience interested. In. And it was, they, they just, they didn't give them anything to work with. Like there's some, some, some uh, relationship tension between the, the lead character and his romantic interest. He used to be a drunk. He's a recovering alcoholic and, and I guess yeah. he's sexually incompetent because he does it like you should, he doesn't want to, you know, do it with his wife. But none of that stuff ever hits home. It's not yeah, that there's, interesting. There's a, a little subplot. And uh, I don't know, you may have missed it, uh, but where she was, you know, she kind of alluded to she hurt her wrists <laughs> and she hurt her wrists uh, like in uh, uh, an early period. They're sitting around the table, her, the brothers, Gordon and whoever the, the other brother was and. The other brother, the homeless brothers, was like, oh, well, how did you hurt your wrist? And she goes, oh, I, I fell. So it was later explained that Gordon, her boyfriend, had uh, physically assaulted her while he was drunk. And uh, I guess pushed, okay. her down, pushed her down and she broke her wrist or something like that. And, you know, that's, that's traumatic. And that's, uh, you know, but I'm thinking, what, how does that fit into the movie as a whole? Is this something that could be removed from the movie and the movie would still be just as vapid as it was when it, I, I, it, it felt like they're trying to force something in that was meaningful but at the same time it felt like a little bit too much when you, i mean like it must they must not have they it must not have been something that they really hammered home because i you know i watched it with you initially and then i watched it again i watched our our um you know, like our commentary of it again yeah. just so that i had all the plot points in my head and i, I missed it twice yeah. yeah yeah it's it's definitely in there and it was it reminded me of you know you know they're trying to get gordon to be a sympathetic character that we care about right and and they I, fail they fail uh that's not the only reason they fail not just because of this plot point because i i, I just think it, i go back to the like think of the shining and the movie the shining and stanley kubrick's version and how you know jack torrance starts off as Oh, you kind of think he's a good guy from the very beginning, but you don't really because you kind of get this slimy aspect to him. And yeah. then, you know, it's slowly. Re it's not slow. Uh, yeah, I guess Kubrick, it's always slowly revealed that, uh, you know, he was an abusive drunk 
a husband and father yeah. who abused his kid and pretty much abused his wife too and it made him totally unlikable and that's how it was i mean if that was the direction they were going to go with gordon i i would have understood that but they, they're trying to give him this weird redemption arc of him physically assaulting his wife but we don't see anything else that comes from that so well and that and their their the tone of their relationship doesn't it doesn't reflect like spousal abuse at all i mean but it, that's almost even- kind of like you know I don't know. Yeah, or even long term. We don't know how long this this couple's been together. They don't tell us. No. They don't tell us, right? And uh, we don't. And it's just still a girlfriend and boyfriend situation. They're not married. No, I don't think so. They yeah. never mentioned. You know, no one's ever introduced as their spouse. So. Right. So it's just like kind of a some of these weird, small, minor choices. Uh, you know, it's like why not make them married? Why not make them a long time married couple that you know, you know by long time maybe they've been married five years and at, yeah. at the beginning at the beginning of that relationship is when he do, did that and he's trying to been trying to reverse his ways up to this point but we don't know they could have to me it seems like they're just a girlfriend boyfriend they've been together for you know a year maybe and anyways <laughs> I, yeah, well i mean in the kind of character that they present uh, from gordon he's like he i can see why he was cast as the herbert west character in the uh, reanimator musical because yeah. he's perfect for that and i watched some uh excerpts from from the play and it's he's great in it he's yeah. a good singer you know like it, that that play looks fun oh it was uh, hilarious great yeah and um so i can see why he was cast in that but in this he just he he kind of comes off like a Herbert West character, but it doesn't make him very likable in a way. Yeah. Like he, he definitely, definitely doesn't have Jeffrey Combs gravitas who does though. Right. But, um, you know, I mean, he's just, he seems like introverted and, and just weird and, and stiff and, and bad socially. Like he doesn't, they don't give us a whole lot of reasons yeah. to root for him. They don't, they don't give us anything really, uh, you know, like they don't give us a reason to really like her or dislike anybody that much like the yeah. characters that they, they you can tell are obviously set up to be contemptible villains or that are going to get killed later on or still they they spend so little time and effort yeah. with them in developing their character that you're kind of like okay i'm glad there's a kill but it was almost or like we said a reprieve from the boredom of the movie and, right um one thing that kind of struck me about it too is it's like in a movie like this the the board game is basically the big MacGuffin of the film it's 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 the necronomicon of this right. movie and it wasn't that interesting. It wasn't like you, you never get a good sense that they really fleshed out how the game is played. And and it just, you know, it, it would have worked better if there were some really creepy, disturbing illustrations involved with it. Or if there was yeah. just seemed to, to be more backstory and lore associated with the game itself. It didn't have that. It was just, you know, yeah. it was a good idea that just wasn't executed all that well, unfortunately. Yeah, and you're right. The one, the biggest selling point of this is that it's a it's a take on the old '80s. Well, not old '80s, but you know, late '80s, early '90s. Uh, there was a a big uh, thing about VHS games and VHS yeah. board games. You pop the video game, or you pop the VHS tape into your VCR player, and you follow along. Maybe pause it every once in a while as you played the game, and you kind of work in sync with the VHS. Um, so yeah, you'd think that would be a huge part of it because that's how it's advertised. And you'd think there'd be some kind of game, a little more complex game mechanics later on, because it just seemed like they're just, oh, well, this rule is now this, you know, or we we have to do this now. We have to do this now. It's like, well, where do these cards come from? Remember, they're going through cards. Yeah, like, they were pretty, cards. They were pretty well illustrated. Card. Yeah, of course, I'm gonna as illustrator, I'm gonna notice that. But um, <laughs> you know, they were pretty well illustrated. But uh, yeah, like the the. You know, I wouldn't, it's not that I need the game to be just like something that look to look like something that you could go to the store and buy and right. actually play. It would be nice, but, you know, I understand that's a big ass, but sure. it, it seemed pretty slapped together. And, um, you know, I mean, like still, it, it sounds like we hated it. I, there were certain aspects of it that I found frustrating. I'm, I'm rooting for the director because I think that there's something there. It's kind of yeah. like, um, have you ever like gotten into a band and then you realize that you were about maybe three albums into their career and you go back and listen to the first one. And it was like, wow, they, they come a long way. This, yeah. this feels like his first EP. It feels like there's, there's something there. He's got, uh, I think he's got a lot of potential, but he, yeah. he needs to, to work on 
characters that we can get into or, you know, just kind of make it so absurd and, and ridiculous, maybe make it just an outright comedy that to keep you right. invested in the people on the screen. If, if they're, you're spending that much time with them not getting killed, they need to be doing something there. I think that's why a lot of directors in the 80s kind of leaned on a lot of nudity. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, you know, yeah. I mean, humor. Yeah. And if he was going to be taking from those things, he should have gone all in. Um, I think you mentioned comedy where this film really wanted to play up some of the comedic aspects of it. Uh, but they really, uh, they fell flat a couple of times. I could, sometimes it was kind of, it was kind of funny to see the two brothers interact with each other, uh, doing the awkward hugs where they didn't know whether to give a hug or to shake their hand. And, and then, in, you know, at the end of the film, they give themselves, they give each other a sincere hug, you know? Yeah. yeah. I thought that was great. I actually did. Um, yeah, it was, but, yeah, you can see what he was going for, but but it, yeah, but the the stuff, the events leading up to it, the the awkward little funny, supposedly funny stuff, it just wasn't working for me. I was just oh, like, it it fell flat. If, it, yeah. if they were going for jokes, it just was. It just came off kind of flat and awkward. It's like when you make a joke that no one even under, registers as a joke, and then they just stare at you. That's kind of how. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of how it felt. Well, it happens to me uh, multiple times on a day. Oh yeah, day. yeah. Yeah, I, I I can't I tell ten great dad jokes to my wife and uh, she maybe laughs at one. So, well, uh, wives <laughs> are never a good audience. They they never appreciate our brilliance, right? Or they're sick to death of hearing about it every day. They realize they didn't. They don't have to laugh anymore to uh, make us feel. Yeah, better. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Move out? I don't, it's over uh, for both of us, buddy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, from the from the from the very beginning though, um, we get the we. We don't really get a sense of time again. It, it's it's weird. Uh, we see a family hanging up a, a grand opening sign on a video store uh, back, I guess, in 1990 or whatever. And yeah, it, it, it's this family. You see this kid with glasses on, and then you see this other kid with no glasses. And <laughs> that's they, they made made sure to make sure to really uh, point those kids out. And then like the last shot of that first scene is just the dad just like. Uh, uh, just doing this weird look and i'm like uneventful that, it was uneventful because we don't really know what happened um to the dad because that was one of the main plot points where dad disappeared he's been disappearing one of the things they said he was disappearing on and off throughout the years and then he just disappeared permanently in seven months ago <laughs> gotta get some cigarettes and milk <laughs> cigarettes and milk like uh, those kids are like i've never seen him smoke a cigarette and i've never had a sip of milk in my entire life but he's just been gone well and that's that's another thing you know, it's an odd it's an odd comparison but you know how in like all these snl movies they always seem to sh to start off with uh like a flashback like here's like you know i don't know like half baked talladega nights any it, like any of these these silly comedies there's always like they always start off with a flashback scene where they're kids and it's it's formulaic but it's a way to kind of introduce the audience and tell them what these characters are like like here's right. a personality they've always been like this this is always the dynamic now we're going to cut to them as adults that's that's pretty much the only reason you do a scene like that this the the, the intro scene where it shows like they existed as children it does <laughs> nothing to lead you into the movie aside from right. establish that dad owned a, a, a vhs store which was un, it was this unnecessary flashback thing yeah and dad was off screen so much that he just barely registered as a character it right was, yeah it, that's all we heard about it was just them talking about him or mentioning him um, yeah and, and it's it's like it relies on people to tell you about him to even kind of remind you that he exists as yeah. a character yeah <laughs> and you know again they mentioned that that was a main that was the main plot point right that you know dad yeah. is dad has disappeared um the last thing he was watching apparently was the video cassette of beyond the gates game board game and it's not even near the climax of the film when they're in this other worldly dimension, which is just a look like a, a theater stage that they put props on. <laughs> yeah. It looks like I'll <laughs> use the red light for this one. <laughs> and uh, he shows up and then it's like, why is he demonic? Why, how did he get there in the first place? And yeah. And oh, spoilers. I mean, I don't know that anybody really cares, but spoiler, like at the end of the movie, everybody that was killed throughout the movie. And I guess they were kind of killed by the game. Like they find to they find like a, a voodoo doll in the, in the box. And then they, mm -hmm. or they, 
the game leads them to find a voodoo doll. They dig it up out of the yard and then they reach inside it. And then that disembowels a, a character. And then he shows up later in the game. So everybody that's associated with the game that dies returns as this demonic person. There's one character in there that I, I said he looked like Mortis, the musician. Yeah. Uh, we, it, I it's like, who, was... who the hell was he? Like, no, that's what I was understanding. We, we, I remember watching. We're just like, who is this now? <laughs> who is this? Is this like, just some demon guy that just showed up? But, um... Yeah. Like, there's just, they, 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 yeah. It's, uh, there were a lot of missed opportunities. Just yeah. even working within the resources and the structure that they had, they, they missed a lot of opportunities to give us some interesting backstory, some lore, some, um, you know, kind of hell. If they're going to do, if they're going to start the movie with a flashback it should be a flashback showing what the game's capable of or what it wants right you know, like, like they're seeing other people play it or something's going on yeah yeah you're, you're exactly right yeah yeah so your film sucks <laughs> no, it, it doesn't it doesn't no, you know. i mean uh, i mean we're we're being critical of it now but like we pointed out that there were some good aspects of it you know the special yeah. effects were good um the the actors are good and I, I think that it was just kind of like a, I think the pacing and the, the tone of it was a little bit off where I didn't know if they wanted it to be funny or. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's a good point. Like it just, it didn't, it didn't quite know what kind of movie it wanted to be. It's, it's, it's yeah, for being so influenced by Stuart Gordon, they didn't really take, they didn't really, uh, you know, take a lot of the aspects that made his films kind of these wonderfully campy classics is, is uh, it's just the, the over the top, um, uh, like acting. And I don't know what, what is, what does make his movie so wonderful? There's something really great about him, but something it's, it's campy. To... I always go back to reanimator just because, you know, you, the acting is always over the top. Um, uh, the, the, there's always some kind of gore effects or something is happening within the yeah. films, you know, it, it, it doesn't plot, it doesn't plot on for an hour before we see anything. Uh, Gordon gives us kind of what we need spaced out. Nice. Yeah. Kind of like yeah, a crack it, dealer. It, <laughs> like Not that, that I would know that much. About it, so. like his first dove is free and then he's going <laughs> to come back, but you're right. He always starts off. Like I'm going to get you right off the, 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 in the, before the, first credits even like the initial credits roll somebody's getting their head chopped off or there's something yeah. just deeply compelling going on and he and i mean i it's it you could call it crass and base but he's just like okay we need some female nudity in this yeah. so you know like that's a uh bless her heart barbara crampton i mean it's when I was doing research on this, I had to stop myself from just doing image searches of her. Like, right, no, this right. is not helpful <laughs> for the podcast. But yeah, she, uh, you know, she she was great. He he knew like uh, what a trooper to yeah. to, to even sell. like I made the joke during during our watch through of it that I'd love to be a fly on the wall when Stewart tried to uh, sell her on some of the scenes that she was going to oh, be in in his movies. <laughs> yeah, like you want me to do what with what? That's, okay i guess I, I i guess you're a genius i'll i'll do it uh, i'll do know. it are you sure no one's gonna see this film <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> it's not gonna become the thing you're known for by any means <laughs> right <laughs> now the um but i was i was thinking like even like um like like gordon's dagon which uh i absolutely oh, love yeah. I, lo I love dagon and it, it kind of has that weird kind of slow intro but he's still incorporates some mystery in it and then even when we're in the town of Mboka, um stuff is already happening there's a storm the the atmosphere is just literally dripping you know and yeah. just wet and you know mysterious and then you know that that's within the first you know 15 and 20 minutes he just thrusts us into this world and you know maybe that's what i was missing from a gordon-esque or an homage to Gordon yeah. is something like that, where he thrust you into this world. You know the you know the rules of the game. You know what you're getting involved in. And uh, Beyond the Gates didn't really deliver on that. Back to Beyond the Gates, that this was it looked promising. It looked you know for me it was right up my alley when I saw the cover and I saw the you know the theatrical trailer. A yeah, board game. It's like yeah, yeah. man, I, I get it. It's eighties nostalgia. Mm -hmm. I love board games. You know, let's do this. And they. Yep. Uh, Mid, fair to middling <laughs> fair to <laughs> middling best. well i mean if i could recommend though I, I would recommend people to check it out 
I mean, yeah. If if only at least to see some of the cool little kill scenes. I mean, I guess you could just go pop those up on YouTube or something. But nah, go watch the movie. They they yeah. they took enough time to make it. You can sacrifice a an hour and twenty six minutes out of your life. I think that's how long it was. Um, yeah, yeah, it wasn't too long. In fact, uh, four of those minutes are probably credits. So you know, yeah, I mean, you always look the silver lining. <laughs> If anything, watch it with us. Watch us make fun of it. Yeah. And, uh, until we get a, until we get bombarded with the inevitable cease and desist. Oh, just, just <laughs> stop doing that. Well, I mean, I guess. Uh, do we have anything else to say about uh, Beyond the Gates? No, it was, it was a it, it was a okay at best a horror movie with some some good kills uh, from a director that I think is probably going places if he if he sticks with it. So yeah, I think out of the the ones we've watched so far, and I think this one is slightly above the rest that we've seen. So uh, yeah, it was definitely better than that last herd that I already purged from my memory. <laughs> yes, I know what you're talking about. In fact, that one uh i thought i had already edited i thought i didn't edit any video on it and so i started editing the editing it and then i i get that uh are you sure you want to save over this file i was like what and it turned out i had already put together the episode and i was like oh oh i guess i did i just (laughs) like you you purged it from memory so much you forgot you edited the yeah i forgot i had even edited it down so i was just like oh i did do that didn't i so anyways well, well, yeah. that's uh, that's beyond the gates and yeah. beyond and, the gates, and uh, we don't we have no idea what we're going to do next, but we'll figure it out. And um, if you stuck with us, we appreciate you checking in. We do uh, horror movie commentary reviews, and we uh, do vi- video games, horror video games. So check that out. Exactly. We have uh, you know all the good social media stuff will be posted in this video. You'll find it on our SoundCloud and. Um, yeah until then uh i hope you guys don't suffer too much and if you have a recommendation for a movie that you'd like us to watch and sit through then please post that shit post that, post that shit in the comments uh head to our discord too we got a discord and uh, i think that's about it yeah for now for now more to come see right now this is where we cue the outro music going out and it's creepy bing gong bing boo i don't know how it goes but and then we'll you'll hear it this is how we fade out. We do this. Ready, Clay? Yeah. Ooh, ooh, goodbye, everybody. <laughs>